What is the most OP build for Constance in Fire Emblem Three Hopes? First, I would like to say, Constance is a beast. Her damage may even rival Lucithia herself, potentially taking the top DPS spot out of all of my builds so far. I think you're really gonna enjoy this one, so without further ado, I present to you Constance the Holy Bolt. Our weapon of choice is gonna be the Blood Gain. The fact that Wit Strike converts all of our damage to magic, and magic is our highest stat, is just a match made in heaven. To make things even more broken, Blood Gain has a second ability called Subversion. This drastically increases our crit hit rate on our magical attacks. And it just so happens that Blood Gain just turned all of our attacks into magical attacks. How convenient. Our accessory this time around is Azure Dagger. Sadly, Constance has a pretty bad unique ability, so we're swapping it out with Azure Lightning. I'll get to this in a little bit, but if you can't swap it out right now, just run the ability as is. The build doesn't change any. It's just going to be a weaker variant. Our battalion of choice is Resist Cavalry, since as usual, they are the most common enemies in the endgame. We're using both a combat art and magic for this build. We're running Lightblade and Bolting. Lightblade serves as our heal, since Nosferatu is, uh, garbage. Its heal is worse, it's harder to get past an enemy guard, and it's just bad, so Lightblade it is. As for our damage spell, we're running Bolting. Not only is Bolting one of my favorite spells, but you'll see in just a second that we're actually running both a stronger version of Lightblade and Bolting. Our swapped out unique is Azure Lightning. This imbues our attack with a devastating lightning effect. On its own, it's a pretty good ability, but it has a second use. Azure Lightning will actually function as an Essence of Lightning ability. This transforms our lightning spells, combat arts, strong attacks, and class actions into a more powerful version. This powers up our Bolting tenfold. Our second unique is Emergent Magic. This grants a moderate chance when using Elemental Magic to instead cast a more powerful version of that magic. This ability is really cool, but it does the same thing our Essence of Lightning does. It just doesn't work half the time, so we're actually not going to be able to make use of this unique ability. Resolute Path reduces damage received from enemies by 50% when ordered to seize. Sword Fair increases our crit hit chance even more, stacking with our Blood Gain. And Axe Buster gives us 95% extra damage against axe-wielding enemies. Now as for our abilities, as usual I'll tell you where I got each one at the end of the video. Sword Prowess gives us a 30% damage boost while wielding a sword. Burst of Resolve fills our Awakening Gauge for each each critical hit that we land, which is a very, very high rate due to Blood King and Sword Fair. While the Bandon greatly increases our damage to enemies, but also greatly increases our damage received from enemies. Life Force greatly increases our damage dealt by combat arts and magic, but causes us to sustain damage with each use proportionate to might. This ability is why we're running Light Blade, because without it, we're going to be using up all of our potions real quick. Offensive Tactics increases our damage by 20% as long as our battalion is still active. Essence of Light does exactly what the Essence of Lightning does except for our Light Spells, in this case powering up our Light Blade. Boost Critical increases our crit hit chance even further since you can never have enough crit. Forethought restores both our Awakening and Warrior Gauges when using Combat Arts or Magic, which we're going to be doing. A lot. Battle Instinct boosts our fill rate of both our Warrior and Wakening gauges until one of them is completely filled. Finally, we run Fly Swatter, which increases both the Awakening and Warrior gauge fill rates again when attacking enemies that have been launched into the air, which both our Light Blade and Bolting do. Our most important stat this time around are Magic Dex and Speed. So to get a good boost to those stats, we want to level Constance 70 times as a Gremory and 50 times as a Dancer. This should land you in a good spot overall while maxing out your magic. Constance is more than powerful enough without stat boosting items. I actually recommend you save them for someone else who needs them. Constance is a force of nature, just like Lysithia and as such, you are also a glass cannon, so be careful how you play her. The idea here is you start off with a cast of bolting to damage nearby commanders, then throw in a light blade to heal up the damage you took. A well-placed and well-timed light blade can heal you about 70% of your health. So if you miss a few, it's not a huge deal. But the longer you play this build, the better you're gonna get at keeping yourself at full health. Constance doesn't just rely on bolting to do damage, we have a crazy fill rate on both our awakening and warrior gauges too. So feel free to use your warrior specials and nuke commanders on the battlefield. Just make sure you don't have any left before activating your awakening. 
While awakened, you're even stronger than you were unawakened, so just do more of the same. Throw in combos if you want to, since we're running with Strike, even our normal combos are based on magic damage so everything you do is devastating. As for where I got each ability, Sword Prowess is from Myrmidon, Thief, and Mercenary. Burst of Resolve from Trickster, Wild Abandon from Brigand, Life Force from Mage, Offensive Tactics from Wyvern Rider, Essence of Light from Priest, Boost Critical from Warlock, Forethought from Trickster, Battle Instincts from Bow Knight, Flyswatter from Falcon Knight, Lightblade from Thief, and Bolting from Warlock. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe for more builds.